couple fellow tight ends, a couple young guys. What have you seen from Jeremy Ruckert so far early in his second season in the NFL? And then also, what are your first impressions of Zach Coons when you just see how big of a human being he is? Yeah, hey, Ruck's the, hey, Ruck, Ruck showed us what he, you know, he showed us flashes last year in that last game. Um, you know, he had that sit block and he put somebody on his butt and um, he was he was feeling himself after that and, and he kept it going. So that momentum that he had in that last game was definitely carried over. And, you know, that first day of practice, even, you know, the, the coming couple of days and, and the meetings that we've had, he's on his stuff. So um, I'm expecting a lot out of him. I, I, I knew he was going to be a good player. We just had to give him crap because he was a rookie last year, but um, he's really stepped it up in, in, a, in a huge way so far. And then, yeah, Zach, Zach, uh, Zach's big. He's a big boy. He can, once he gets those legs going, he can, he can really fly it on the field. Um, you know, Mid's going to have some stuff, so his work cut out with, with him, just uh, fine-tuning the little things for sure, but um, he's going to be a good player as well. He's, he's a big body. You had talked about how guys like Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, you've spoken to all of them before. What does that mean to you as someone who was seven games into your NFL career before you hurt your knee to have guys reach out to you that have had sustained success in the NFL? Uh, just knowing that I have the respect from those guys that I literally was in high school looking up to, watching to, watching, watching all their highlights and stuff like that, like it's crazy to even think about. And um, like I said, me and Saquon, we were having real in-depth conversations. He was talking to me a lot, like we were sending voice memos to each other and everything. And then Christian McCaffrey just telling me to hit him up whenever I need anything. And uh, it's just been cool to uh, get that respect and have all those guys reach out to me. So that means, you know, that helps me know that I'm doing something good, that I was doing something good before I got hurt. When you see Aaron Rodgers out on the field in an eight jersey with a Jets helmet, is it weird for you at all? I mean, it hasn't been so far. I think the biggest difference is the eight. You know, I'm used to calling him 12. I've been calling him 12 for over a decade. And, um, you know, <laughs> seeing him at eight is a little weird. But, you know, he's still the same old player. Uh, just, just watching him go through his process and, and watching him help some of the younger guys get up to speed, it, it's been really nice. A lot of people have been talking about Aaron Rodgers' presence in the meeting room. What have you specifically taken away from him, whether that be something on the field that you saw or something behind the scenes that we don't have the privilege to see or hear? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think an example is if I feel like, you know, coaches love coaching. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they do. So, But sometimes things might get overcoached a little bit, which is fine. You know, like, there's no discredit to anybody. That's the game. Um, you know, having a conversation with Aaron always solves it. And I think that because at the end of the day, it's what he wants. So, um, stuff like that helps. And in the, in the meeting room, he's uh, the, the dialogue is very open. You know, most meetings it's going to be in a true like lecture, where it's not like that with us. And Hack makes it that way as well. Like, it's never like that. So it's all open dialogue. What we thinking? Like, what we thinking here? What we thinking there? If I don't, if, you know, it's an open dialogue. If I have something to say, then I can. You know, so. Um, it's, it's more of a meeting than a lecture, so it makes it great. And how much pride do you take in special teams? Because last season you played a very big role there. Oh, special teams. I mean, as a guy, when you're when you're in the later rounds of the drafts, when you're an undrafted guy, when you're a backup, special teams is where you make your money. If you don't take special teams as serious as you do defense, you'll never get the chance to see defense. Because, like I said, the starters are playing the whole game. They're playing all season. If I want to get in the game, you know, my mom's flying up here to see me, friends, family, girlfriend, you know, I got to take special teams serious. You know, they can hear my name at least once or two times making a tackle. So, you know, just I feel good at the end of the day getting those tackles. My coaches and, like I said, my friends and family hear my name once or twice, you know, light up every Wednesday. Is this the most talented roster that you've been on on paper in the National Football League? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I'm not going to sit down and sit here and break down position by position, but, um, you know, it's hard to say that I've played on a more talented team than this. Um, you know, I just, you look at it on paper and there's just not a hole, right, defensively, offensively. Um, you know, I would like to give credit to our running back room, but I'm not a huge fan of Brees Hall. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, the talent's off the charts, now we just got to put it together. You obviously have a history with Thomas Morstead in New Orleans. How excited, yeah, I mean, I think I know the answer, but how excited were you to learn that you're going to be reunited with Thomas, and what does he do so well? Man, he uh, he FaceTimed me one day randomly. I'm like, yo, what's going on? He's like, man, I'm back. <laughs> so, man, we he helped me get here. That's all I can say. Uh, I feel like 
that's, you know, he helped me get paid. He put it right there, and I'm right there for him. So I feel like it, you know, work hand in hand. I got my back. He got mine. How about exercise-wise? What, what did you change as far as inside the weight room or what you were doing aerobically? Yeah, the, the, the exercises were definitely different. I started to swim. I started swimming this off season, so that, that helped me out a lot as well. Uh, yeah, like my trainer, is the way he works out is just, is just different, so that helped out a lot. You played in Tampa mm -hmm. with Tom Brady. Now you come here and the Jets trade for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> when that trade was completed, what did you think? No, it's kind of the same situation I fell into when I was with the Bucks. We had a great defense the year before. You know, we just needed we just needed one piece uh, that we was missing, and it was like Aaron Rodgers, it was the Tom Brady. Uh, you can't we can't replace those guys. And when you got guys like Garrett Wilson, uh, you bring guys like Allen Lazard in, and we already had a Brees Hall and uh, all the guys running, all the running backs we got. You know, you can't. It's it's over. It's like it's like we got to create a team now at this point. Um, and that's kind of the vibe with the Bucks. It was like we had a creative team, man. Now I joke with the guys, like you know, we got the same creative team, man. It's gonna be a great, a great year. Do you tell the guys about oh, that yeah, experience, I, about getting the ring, oh, sure. and then that's Brady a, coming in, and you, <laughs> and you guys having an opportunity to do the no, same I, thing? I, with I definitely them. do because you know, manifesting stuff, and it's just like, it's like deja vu for me. So I'm like, I'm trying to manifest to everybody else and let the guys know, the coaches, everybody. He's just like, you know, this the culture. We got the, we got the right group and the right pieces.